Greetings, y'all. It's your knock, Peter Mata, and welcome back to another Golf Stories podcast. I believe it's episode five. Of course, joined here by PGA Tour caddy, Daryl Adden. Daryl, what is up, man? Hey, dude. Nice to, nice to be here again. And uh, like I said, we're always going to keep saying it until we somehow, you know, break <laughs> off and not mm-hmm. um, get an episode going. But we're going. We're, yeah. we're here this week. Haven't missed one yet. We were was it five straight, like I said, episode five. So I we we're we got, we're carving up time. We're we're finding time to do it, and we're delivering the goods. So you're welcome, uh, audience. <laughs> uh, you anyway, a or a lot. Yeah. Uh, so last week, AT and T Pebble Beach National Pro Am at Pebble Beach. Uh, Daryl here was on site as caddy for DA points. Uh, DA points, obviously is partner with Bill Murray and Bill Murray happened to be partner with Darius Rucker and Chris Stroud. So how was that Daryl? How was, how was I your mean, week at the, the AT&T? It was a great week. I mean, um, the group was awesome. The crowds were unreal. Um, you know, I've been going to AT&T since I was young and I'll be honest with you, like the crowds sl- and weather combination this week is probably mm-hmm. the best I've ever seen it. Yeah. And so you. that, that being said, unreal. Like just, I mean, it was just, it was it was nice to be back on back inside the ropes, and you know, got to see a bunch of my friends, and just like I said, that tournament competition drive just kind of you know gets you going again. Yeah, and yeah, you were on TV. Of course, they their TV is going to show Bill Murray and, and such. Yeah, you were on TV multiple times. I, I sent you a few, and I know I saw some on your stories that uh. You're on there a few other times. So it was interesting uh, just seeing you in action. <laughs> yeah, I mean, got my little minor, you know, moments on TV, which, you know, is always nice. Yeah. Um, like I said, wish, you know, me and my guy could have played better, but all in all, it was a good week. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, on TV, it, it looked beautiful. Like, that's oh. exactly what you want. If you're going to Pebble Beach in that weather, you're you're basically on heaven on earth. I mean, as far as oh, I'm like concerned. I said, I've been going to, you know, tons of these things, and like I said last week, just from the cor- how the courses, dude. Not mm-hmm. only was the, was the weather amazing, but the courses were just in the best shape I've seen them. Immaculate. I mean, le- the other part is like MPCC was unreal. I mean, mm-hmm. again, they didn't play that rotation last year, so mm-hmm. it's basically had two years to get that rotation. You know. And mm-hmm. let's put it this way: MPCC was the fastest greens out of the three. Really? So Pebbles when you put looking pretty crispy too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So MPCC was definitely the faster of the three. And mm-hmm. so, like I said, when you put it when you put it that way, like like I said, it was just unreal week, amazing yeah. week. Yeah, Good the course part looks of. absolutely lush. A pebble definitely like the greens. Normally, sometimes they look a little spotty, but this week it, it looked spotless. No, this mm-hmm. week was they, they were perfect. well well groomed well well. Pre- again it's never awful but mm-hmm. it, this was just on another level of good yeah. yeah anything catch you by surprise as far as the course i know you just said it was immaculate and everything like that anything that like made, um, made faster or anything like that it, it definitely played firmer than usual mm-hmm. um you know the pins there were some pins that were you know not as easy as they normally were um you know because normally the first couple of days they normally ease up on it a little bit because of the amateurs. And so, you know, that, um, but some of those pins out there were, were not the easy, you know, pins. And so it wasn't just easy to make birdie, like to make that cut last week, to be honest with you, like you, you, you I don't think last week you could have faked making a cut. I mean, yeah. you say that every week on tour for the most part, um, there's just ones that you just kind of, you know, like I said, you think like you shouldn't miss this cut, but last week, like if you made the cut, you're, you're, you're golfing pretty well. Yeah. You, there's some weeks where you can just grind it out and, and make yeah. it this week. You had to go out and get some birdies and yeah, you had to get some birdies. five under or 600 was the, the cut at the, after the, yeah, third round. yeah, so. exactly. So, you know, that's, um, and, and Saturday, to be honest with you, Pebble played a little, a little bit tougher mm-hmm. in a sense of, um, when you get the win, Pebble plays. I think Pebble is the is the X factor of the three courses because mm-hmm. if you get no wind, it plays the easiest. Mm-hmm. And then if you get some wind on those ocean holes, it, it changes the whole you know 
basically the course because like i said now a, a course that can be easy is, is a little bit more tough yeah and, and spyglass sort of with those trees you're a little bit guarded so mm -hmm. um even if it is windy you're you know those certain holes that are going to play hard are going to play hard regardless but pebble like i said it could play really easy or really hard depending on the wind yeah and uh I definitely that third round seemed like uh the guys on pebble were not, I mean, not necessarily struggling, but they weren't making as many birdies as like the first two rounds. They weren't. Right, right. Like I said, and guys are going to, you know, there's no, you, even if a course is playing difficult, you're going to have a couple guys that are still going to light it up. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's always, but as, as a whole, I think Pebble played the toughest definitely on when we played it Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so as far as results, uh, Seamus Power looked like he was about to run away with it after, I believe, two rounds. He was up by five. Kind of went back to the field, uh, and then Jordan Spieth popped his head up there, and it looked like maybe it was going to be his tournament to lose. It was his tournament to lose there for a couple holes, but then Tom Hoagie, who was pretty much there the entire tournament, kind of just steadily caught, came up, came up, and then closed at the end with, uh, I believe, what four birdies in the last five, something like that, and and got his first win. Uh, so and, yeah, I mean, you know, and so crazy Pebble's definitely not a place for, you know, first time winners. And, uh, you know, he, 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 he took care of business. Definitely, yeah. definitely, you know, good for him. And, um, I know his caddy and definitely, you know, good dude. So definitely happy for the, that to, you know, th that team. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he played great that first round, but like, I love what he said after that first round, um, as far as just like his career, like almost like a reflection on his career, he's saying that, you know, in a sense, I've, I've accomplished pretty much everything except winning. And it's just now it's time to go for the win. I, I just loved how sure of himself he, he was, you know, talking in that interview. And maybe I should have bet on him right after the first round <laughs> after hearing that. But I, I mean, it came back to me when he was came back into contention there late. And I was like, you know, maybe he was right, man. I, when you're sure of yourself and you know, you're going down the stretch under pressure. It's sure is a hell of a lot easier to close when uh, you don't know what's going on out there. Well, so, agreed. Uh, agreed. Yeah. Uh, Spieth played great, even though he didn't get it done. It was good to see him up there. Um, my picks, Maverick McNeely, I believe tied 33rd. I think he finished seven under overall, middle of the pack. Uh, you know, it is what it is. You I mean, know, it, it, it was a good, it was a good, trust me, um, I'm, I wasn't, you know, hating on that pick for yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, Kevin Kisner missed the cut, uh, and James Hahn, my dark horse, actually uh, withdrew because of COVID, uh, like the night of. So, what are you gonna do? <laughs> right, 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 right. You're gonna hit some. We're gonna we're gonna hit some. We're gonna hit, miss some for sure. We're probably gonna miss a lot on the show. So I'm sorry for those who keep betting on the the Peter Mata picks. I, I'm sure to get one winner. We're both gonna get a winner this year. So That's stay with us. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I mean, did you watch, uh, any of it, uh, Daryl, I know you were focused on those first three rounds, but uh, as far as the thing, I, I think, you know, this week I definitely watched a lot more than I normally watched. Um, just because like I said, you know, I was back in there and, um, definitely, you know, like I said, this is, I've been coming to this event since I was a kid. So, um, it's, it's always has a soft spot for me. So yeah, no, I definitely watched Sunday. Um, Bo Hostler, you know, Bo definitely ha had a chance there and, um, you know, Cantley kind of struggled on Sunday and, um, you know, like I said, guys that are top of the world, like a Spieth and a Cantley, like, you know, those are guys that you typically feel on Sundays that are, you know, going to come at you with a mm -hmm. charge and, uh, you know, they came up short and like I said, uh, good for Tom Hoagie, man. Like I said, yeah. he's been knocking. Um, he's been out there for a while, so definitely, like I said, um, good win on him. And uh, AT and T's done, and off to Phoenix. Yes, off to Phoenix. So, congrats again to Tom Hoagie. Well deserved. You're no longer just the guy known to play with Tiger in the Wyndham in 2015. You, right, right. You're a right. PGA Tour winner, baby. So celebrate that. I know you're in the field for the Waste Management Phoenix Open. Uh, so good luck this week. I I don't think. I'm not going to be, he's just spoiler. He's not in any of my picks. I'm not sure if it's going to be in any of your picks, but congrats to you and good luck this week, Tom Hoagie. Uh, as we move in to this next week, the Waste Management Phoenix Open at TPC Scottsdale. Uh, Daryl, what do you uh, know about TPC Scottsdale? Par 71, 7,200 yards. 
first off, this is definitely one of my favorite events. I mean, mm. um, I have a top five and this is in my top five mm. for sure. Okay. And okay. so, um, <sighs> tough to not be there this year, let's put it yeah. that way. And, um, I love Phoenix. I love Scottsdale. I love the weather. I love everything. You know, I see myself there eventually in the future. So, um, TPC, definitely a ball strikers golf course. Mm. Um, you got to make some putts, um, a lot of, you know, desert cactus. Mm. Um, I think ultimately finding the fairway first is key. Um, because I think once you find the fairway, now you have a little bit, you know, you're a little bit in control of the golf ball. Now you can kind of, you know, place your ball in certain spots to be able to, you know, make percentage plays. But I think ultimately guys that win here are great drivers of the golf ball. Yeah. You know, typically great drivers of the golf ball. So, um, and in control. And so, like I said, plays firm to that place. Mm -hmm. So not necessarily great drivers, but a guy that knows how to find the fairway. Okay. Um, because the par fives are reachable. And like I said, if you know how to, you know, take care of those, um, you know, a lot of exciting things can happen and, um, the ball definitely goes further there. Cause it's, you know, mm. um, in the dome, you know, basically. yeah, desert. And like I said, <laughs> it's, just, um, fun, fun atmosphere, fun mm. week. Like I said, tough that I'm missing out, but, um, definitely love this week. And with the fans back this, you know, like I said, last week at at t there were so many people, mm -hmm. like uh, the most people that I've ever seen since I've been there, I feel, yeah. I feel, um, and so this upcoming week, like I bet they're going all out. So, yeah. and it's Super Bowl weekend. Mm -hmm. So everybody's excited again and everybody's, you know, they're back in charge. So, um, yeah. definitely exciting this week. Yeah. The greatest show on grass is what they dub it. <laughs> oh, and it, it's crazy. Cause the first time I went there, I went there as a spectator mm -hmm. and it's, it's, it's like I said, it's, it's the Super Bowl. If mm -hmm. there's a Super Bowl golf tournament, it's that. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's unreal. It's just, like I said, even from the fans getting in at 6am running to the stands, you know, that whole scene is <laughs> unreal. And, um, yeah. dude, it's, it's like I said, for me, again, it's not for everybody. There's mm -hmm. some people that stay away from this tournament, mm -hmm. um, because that's just not their style. They're more quiet and, mm -hmm. you know, but for me being a sports guy, mm -hmm. it definitely gets your sports, you know, juices going. Yeah. So I love good. this. Like I said, it, in my top five. Yeah. It's definitely one of those that I, I would say the casual fan knows about just because, just because of the 16th hole, essentially. I mean, right. It, I mean, that's such a unique atmosphere and built up a lot because, I mean, it was there before, but Tiger hole in one in 97 oh. just took for it sure. to an, another level you know <laughs> for sure for sure like i said even like even like i remember when francesco made that whole one mm -hmm. they're just throwing beers all over and yeah. like how about that cleanup yeah i mean uh San, was it uh lyle jared jared lyle yeah jared uh, lyle made, made a hole yeah, in one there great as well. story and to make a hole in there so i mean if there's a place to get a hole in one that's definitely one <laughs> for sure oh, yeah for sure and uh i definitely would i think that's a as a casual, as a golf fan, uh, that's like a bucket list thing is to go to that tournament and then play that course eventually. That's without a doubt, I'd love to do. Um, I've played, I've played that golf course, Ooh. and so um, the only tough part of it after seeing um, is it when besides when the tournament's there, it plays it plays really slow and soft. Mm. So like the eleventh hole, for example, like mm -hmm. the eleventh hole is like you know when we play it it's automatic driver during the tournament. It's like three wood or even iron because it plays mm -hmm. so firm. You don't want to run in the water. Yeah. But yeah. like, you know, that's, that's the only tough part, but it is what it is. And, um, but like I said, still a great experience. Yeah. I mean, everything looks just like any week. I mean, it looks immaculate on TV oh, it's, when they play. It's, it's it, that place. Like I said, it seems unreal almost, yeah. you know, cause you see, you know, all the Brown spots around it. And then you mm -hmm. see every, you know, the middle green and it's almost like yeah. fake. <laughs> You know, but it's 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 real. Yeah, it looks like Astro Turf essentially. Right, it looks it, it in the middle of the desert. <laughs> it looks as like Astro Turf, but it's not. Yeah. So uh I guess we'll move into the picks. I guess uh I'll I'll go ahead and go first for the dark oh. horse. Um let me see what my guy is. Here he is. Mr. Matt Wallace. Mm. Uh, European. I believe he's twenty two, two hundred twenty to one or something on this one. When we were using golf digest this week couldn't find the cbs one but 
Yeah, I mean, Matt Wallace, uh, one thing I feel like I've noticed uh, on this course is it doesn't hurt to be long, and Matt Wallace certainly has the length to get it around. And he's kind of been knocking on the door as far as uh, PGA Tour wins. He's got a few European or DP World Tour wins now. Yeah, uh, DP. DP yeah. World Tour. Correction. Yeah, correction. Sorry about the DP World. I know you pay a lot of money to get your name up there. So, <laughs> But, uh, yeah, he's a solid quality player that hasn't quite gotten that PGA Tour win, but he's – He's knocking there, and I think he's got the the game. It, it suits it this week at uh, TPC Scottsdale. So, uh, Daryl, what do you think of that? And wh- who is your dark horse? I'm I'm gonna go. We haven't heard of this guy in a while ish, mm. but um, I like Brandon Grace this week. Oh, okay. You know, I I think you know he's you know he won last year in Puerto Rico. Um, he's slowly trending. And like I said, I think he's a guy that one makes a lot of putts. He's not fairly long, but I think he's long enough. Mm -hmm. And I just think he, you know, he sets the tone to just, he's a guy that bores you. hits a lot of fairways, hit a lot lot of greens and, Mm -hmm. uh, I'm feeling him this week. Yeah. He's uh, a, on this one, he's 139 to, to one, Uh, my dark horse, dark, dark horse. But, uh, you know, he came in second to win him. He was a part of that six man playoff. So yeah. he's been trending. He's got no, the six, he's, the what, 62 in a major, which is the only man to do that. And, and, correct. And so, that, like, you know, the, the, that major, you know, like I said, like, I think he's, you know, he's, like I said, this place is going to play firm. Um, you know, he, like I said, he's not long, but I think he's long enough. And mm-hmm. like I said, just, you know, beats golf courses with his, you know, fairway and greens and makes mm-hmm. putts. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Definitely go on my dark horse, Brandon Grace. <laughs> I mean, if you're shooting 62 in majors, I mean, there means you can yes. you can you can get the birdies. So well, well, that so like I said, I think I I think he's a good candidate for me. So yeah, I like it. I like Brandon Grace. I would not be surprised to see him. And by the way, the favorites, of course, this week are John Rom, uh, John, Justin Thomas, Patrick Cantlay. Uh, I mean, it's very hard to go against John Rom. This is actually kind of a home game for him since he went to Arizona State. Oh um, yeah, for sure. I'm not, I'm not, uh, he's not in any of my picks, but it's, I'm just telling you, it's so hard not to just, you know, kind of be, I guess, in a sense, boring and choosing him. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see him up there, but my, I'll move to my contender pick. I'm going back to the well. I'm going to the Mr. 3000. Well, Tony Finau, he's a mm. uh, 38 to one, according to golf digest here. Um, he came in second a couple of years back. I would feel like runner ups here trend. They, they get their revenge in a sense. Webb Simpson, I believe, came in second a few years back, and then he won to beat Tony Finau. Ricky Fowler came in second, and then he won uh, a few years after. Uh, so I don't know this course. I guess you can get your vengeance on. And Tony hasn't been playing great since his win. Uh, maybe I've taken all the magic out of him with my bet there. But, you know, he's, I think he – I want to say he uh, changed his residence to uh, – Scott yep. Stale. So lives uh, there now for sure. Yeah. So, you know, he missed it last year because of, I think he went to Saudi, uh, but yep. he's back again. So, yeah. So he's back again. So, I mean, you know, that's a, that's a decent contender pick. No, that's pretty no, high I mean, odds I mean, for a contender pick. So. I, I definitely, I definitely <laughs> took a peek at him. Don't, don't get me wrong. Like yeah. he definitely didn't, you know, mm-hmm. he was definitely in the radar. Yeah. So um, good game for that course. Contender like pick. Your... I'm going to, you know, similar well ish. Mm. Um, I mean, it's always going to be in my well-ish type mm-hmm. of person. I'm going Corey Connors. Corey Connors again. for my <laughs> for my uh, you know, contender. Um, like no I hate. said, yeah. you know, I just have a lot of faith in the Canadians mm-hmm. and how they operate. They're they're very, you know, silent assassins. Mm, that's you a good know, description. They just, yeah, they just go about their business and elite ball striker in Corey Connors, right? Elite. Yeah. And a guy that drives it well, um, you know, and uh, like I said, you know, that's definitely my contender. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't hate the pig. He's 45 to one corn golf digest. Um, yeah. I mean, we're all kind of waiting for him to, to get that next win. That next, correct. You know, he's capable of it. I mean, oh, he's, he's, he's definitely know. capable of it. Ball striking ridiculous. And like you said, the silent assassin, even all the way back to the Mike Weir, like they just had that quiet calmness to them and they just they have go about that their business. Quiet, yes. Lo- mm-hmm. lo- like I said, 
they're they're doing a lot of good things up there in Canada. Mm. And I, and I, I mean, I've been lucky to be able to be behind the scenes of it all. Mm. And they do things very well up there. It's uh, Canadian golf is in de- good hands for sure. Yeah. Uh, I like the pick. Corey Connors, good ball striker, good course to, to get that second win. Uh, as far as my winner, I'm going back to my LSU well, go Tigers. Um, Sam Burns. Mm. Uh, yes. Uh, 32 to 1, according to Golf Digest. I mean, he's just going to, in my eyes, Sam Burns, I see, I mean, call I mean, me, he, you know, hot take, but I see, I see Dustin Johnson career. Oh, he, Sam Burns yeah, is, I mean, is a specimen he's for a sure. Stud. <laughs> he's, he's a specimen. It, like I said, that, that, and it's, it, it was just waiting to happen. Mm-hmm. You know, it, I mean, everybody knew he was going to be good. So it was just, you know, definitely something just waiting to happen for sure. Yeah. Definitely he's missed opportunities game. too. So like. I mean, I think this is another one to just add to the belt. This was right. a good one. So 32 to one is pretty good value. I mean, I'd say he's because Victor Hovland is 16 to one. And I'd say they're in that same realm right now. And yeah, I mean, that, that's I mean, that's pretty good value in my opinion. So put your bomb dollar in Sam Burns. He's my winner. Go Tigers. Uh, Daryl, what do you think? Who's your winner? My winner is, I mean, you just named it. I just right named it. Victor Hovland. Um, I'm I'm definitely on the Hovland wagon. Mm. Um, Hovland, to be really really honest with you, mm. really really honest with you, give it to me. It, it is a mini Hunter Mayhem to me. Mm. You know, ball striking Jesse drives it amazing, puts it well. Um, I think if if you were to put eras together, I think it's him. Um, mm. You know, maybe I'm biased, maybe I'm not. Um, you know, I think that's, that's my guy. And, you know, those type of guys like him do well in like these desert type of golf mm. courses, you know, like I said, drive it well, you know, I don't want to bring it up too much, but you know, they both struggle with the, with, with chipping. Mm. Um, but True. you know, big picture, <laughs> if mm-hmm. you're not really chipping much, if you're hitting a bunch of greens, uh, on top of, True. like I said, the X factor to mm-hmm. those guys is they can putt amazing. Mm-hmm. So um the Victor Hovland's my winner, guys. I don't I don't hate it. I mean he's just won at uh was it Abu Dhabi, I believe. Yeah, the yeah. World he just Tour. won the desert setting too. Correct, so. correct. <laughs> Ball striking I mean, Jesse type of guys. Yeah. The very 16 to 1, like I had mentioned. Um Victor Hovland, fun fact, he has actually I know he's got three PJ tour wins and hasn't won in a in a in america technically i know right, puerto right. Rico in, in is, the states. yeah in the states uh twice in mexico and once in puerto rico i know it's a united states district, but uh you know I'd, I'd be happy to see him take this one this is, seems like a fitting tournament for him to take down and he's right. trending like i mean he's taking down db dp world tour wins as well so don't hate the pick at all that's a that's an excellent it's just a matter pick. of time yeah and uh it's probably going to be knocking on door in some majors as well both our guys, Sam Burns and Victor Alvin, that's the future, along with Morikawa, Wolf, and whoever else you want to mention there. I mean, that's that's the, that's the future of the game. That's the latest class of oh, it, great it, golfers. Sure. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's our picks, guys. Uh, we're bound to get one of these right. I mean, Daryl has been very close on a couple of them, very like literally a shot close. So uh, we're bound to get some of these right, so stick with us. Uh you know, I wouldn't say it, tell us to foot the bill for you, but you know, we'll, we'll take accountability. You know, if you, oh, can't wait, I have so. no issue being wrong. <laughs> yeah. I've been wrong plenty of times, but you know, this yeah. is what I think, and let's let's roll with it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's our picks. Uh, Daryl, do you have any uh, fun stories, specific stories about this week or tournament that uh, you know come to mind? I mean, the easiest of- the easiest one for me is uh, the first time I was there as a caddy. Mm -hmm. Um, 2017 was there with McKenzie Hughes. Um, obviously one of the most exciting for me, you know, I I will share a fun fact real quick. Mm -hmm. Um, in our fall, fall going into, you know, our first fall of the PGA tour, like, you know, my goal, like telling Mac back in the day was just, Mm -hmm. let's just play well Mm -hmm. this fall so we can shuffle up well and play Phoenix, you know, cause your (laughs) shuffle number, 
you know, typically most guys mm -hmm. like currently right now, there's no corn fairy category guys in, um, only wow. the yeah. first guy is a uh, first alternate as of right now. And so typically this, this field is stronger than normal. Mm -hmm. So typically from that corn fairy category, typically like one through five, maybe seven max gets mm -hmm. in. And right now is technically zero. Wow. Um, that was Dang. technically zero because the two top tens, I think, um, Bo Hostler and Jonathan Bird, I believe, top 10. So, oh, okay. so they yeah. got in. Um, so then kicked out the two guys that would have been in. Dang. And so I remember that was like, you know, our in your like, mind. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, hey, let's just play well so we can play Phoenix. And, um, you know, that week, you know, the first shot, um, the first day, uh, it was that back pin. Mm. It was the back pin and uh me being a rookie um the back pin you got to play you got to play the number short right. for sure mm -hmm. you know i mean i think you know most places you want to count for adrenaline as yardage mm -hmm. um but on that hole their def adrenaline is equivalent to yardage so easily 10 yards Mm -hmm. Um, and so, you know, we picked a club. I forgot what a club, regardless, it was a club that typically that's going to fly around the hole. Yeah. Flew way long. And, uh, I don't remember if he made bogey or double. It doesn't matter. Um, learning experience uh, though. Yeah. Learning experience <laughs> one one. And then, um, the one exciting part about it all is, uh, uh, you know, fried the Friday round. So obviously mm -hmm. I made, I made my blunder there, realized that it, you know, um, mm -hmm. there's, there's such thing as playing adrenaline 10 yards, mm -hmm. um, which normally doesn't happen, but there it does. Um, so the next day we definitely adjusted for it. And I remember, I remember the scenario. It was, um, I think 153 stick and I think 141 mm -hmm. front and normally his wedge goes 140, Yeah, you know, carries 140. And I remember you know, that was the number. And literally he goes, dude, do you think it's enough? Cause like, we're thinking about hitting a nine. Yeah. And cause his nine goes like 152, 153. Yeah. Basically around the number. And I go, it's plenty. Mm. And he hits it 10 feet. Mm. So after, after one round of, you know, seeing that, cause the practice rounds doesn't play like that. Absolutely it plays normal. Not. Yeah. But the tournament, like I said, it, if it's a, knowing what I know now, that back pin, mm -hmm. you're always going to play 10 yards shorter, yeah. maybe even 12. And so, uh, you know, that's one thing that I did learn about that place is like I said, there's such thing as, you know, adrenaline there. So like I said, a pitching wedge should never fly 153. Yeah. You know, and, uh, there it did. Yeah. I mean, that's understandable. I mean, anyone that has others just watching you and then in that case, a whole stadium essentially watching you. You just know that feeling of, oh, I want to hit a good one. Or, I mean, right. in some cases, some people get really nervous and like, oh, sh don't screw this up. So right, 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 there's right, some right. sort of feelings that are going through your body. Uh, and when there's a stadium on you, you got to definitely account for it. And that's, that's a pretty cool story that, I mean, it, it affects the pros too, ladies and gentlemen yeah. out there. So don't it's just feel different bad. scales, just yeah. different scales. Every, they yeah. think the same, just they're just yeah. on a different scale. Yeah, it's, it happens to everyone. Everyone gets nervous, but you got to account for it and embrace it, I would say, for sure. So that's an, that's an awesome story. Yeah. Uh, Phoenix Open, man. That's a, like I said, bucket list for, for you golf fans out there. If you, if you want to see that atmosphere, the greatest show on grass this week. Uh, Daryl, I, I don't really have anything else for you. There hasn't been any fun facts that I see here. I know Mark Hakovecchia. Uh, had the scoring record here, minus 28 before, tied by Phil. Andrew McGee got the first hole-in-one on a par four ever. Uh, this event, we said it, Super Bowl Sunday uh, since 1973. So it's been a tradition. They, they want to make sure they're on Super Bowl Sunday. And that's why, and that's why also it, it, yeah. they moved it back. Yeah, exactly. That's why they moved it this, back this year. And that's kind of why I know some people are like, why do they go to California, to Phoenix, and then California back? They want that Super Bowl uh, yeah. uh, Sunday. So, you know, it's understandable. They want to keep tradition. All uh, good. Yeah. So that's the Thunderbird Classic is what it originated as. 
uh, the Waste Management Phoenix Open now. Uh, looking forward to it, Daryl. Uh, this has been fun as always. Episode five. Episode Golf five, people. Podcast. podcast. So uh, appreciate you all for listening in. Uh, keep commenting below whatever you think, who's going to be the winner, whatever your thoughts on what we should talk about uh, each week, whatever it is. Uh, and like, subscribe, do whatever. Um, so, Daryl, anything else you got before we close out? Like I said, exciting, exciting week this week. I definitely will be paying attention. Like I said, when it's in the top five of my tournaments, mm. I definitely will be pl- paying attention. So looking forward to next week's, you know, when we reunite and uh, we'll talk about this and head over to Riv, which is another, yeah. you know, Classy. exciting place. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be fun. Now, hopefully we might talk a little bit more Tiger. We'll see it's this tournament technically next week. So that's. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Hopefully we'll get a little bit Tiger news and update on him. Uh, But until then, be the Phoenix Open. Uh, Y'all be good. Uh, Until next time, uh, y'all be good. Um, Your words mean something to me.